Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today to get to talk to one of our Hallmark actors. Today, we are talking with Clayton James. And Clayton, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. So what we like to do uh, when we have guests on is uh, find out a little bit about you and what inspired you to get into acting. To be honest with you, I kind of stumbled into acting. Um, I grew up basically working in a mountain bike shop when I was in my teenage years and I played hockey before that. So acting was never really on the radar. I think I went to one audition again by accident when I worked at the bike shop because uh, one of the clients that came in there uh, worked in casting and they said, oh, you've got this little part for a mountain biker. And so I went in and I had no idea what I was doing. I, they gave me some lines and I'm pretty sure I delivered it to like the corner of the room and didn't want to look in the camera. Um, and just was very nervous and sort of the same thing for the first time ever getting into a commercial audition as well. Um, but my, my cousin's, uh, like stepmom's sister, again, it's like just through the, through the, through the network chain of family, her friend was an agent and had, uh, kind of suggested that hey, Clay's got a little bit of a look to him. Does he want to try out and get into commercials? And I was kind of still working in a, a restaurant at the time and not really knowing what I wanted to do and decided to, to give it a try and, boy, was I terrible, you know? So I, uh, I, they gave me my first set of lines as well. And again, kind of just stumbled through everything. And I think it was one of those, I was a lot quieter than I thought I was. And he's like, can you speak up? And then I started yelling and then I was like, and then he's like, no, okay, let's try again. And then I just like, basically just bombed. I froze and he's like, okay, thanks so much. And I left and I was like, why would I ever do this? Like, why do I want to do this to myself? And then for some reason, I guess the more I get knocked down in life, the harder I get up and keep pushing and pursuing and decided to take a um, acting workshop with a a lady named Kathleen Widows here in Vancouver um, for commercials. And uh, then Andrew McElroy, who was one of the Vancouver's more renowned uh, coaches, just came kind of bursting in the room and he was really, he's really loud and vibrant. And I was like, who's that guy? And they're like, oh, that's the acting coach. And I was like, I want to take an acting class with him. And that's kind of just where... I fell into it. And again, not really knowing and not having like zero experience or talent or whatever you want to call it. I was terrible. Um, I didn't really know why I wanted to do it, but I found sort of a, an outlet for my emotions and, and my create my creative side, which I didn't really get to exercise a lot playing hockey or, or, you know, uh, mountain biking. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I stumbled into it. And lo and behold, I just kept sticking it out with Andrew's classes and, you know, after a while working with me, he had said that, uh, hey, you have no idea really what you're doing in regards to the techniques, but he goes, you know, you got a lot of emotions, you're raw and available. And, you know, why don't you try sticking with it for a little while and just giving it your all and seeing how you feel. And then so him and I bonded and I just kind of, like I said, I just, it was almost like a gym class or something I just related to. It was an outlet for me and I didn't book anything for four or five years and wasn't really discouraged because there was no pressure at the time, but I think once I got my first booking from the commercial, we flew to Florida, shot five spots back to back. And I was like, this is amazing. Like, this is, this is what it's all about, you know, get a, a you know, a decent lump sum of money and more than I had ever made and sort of doing what I love to do. And, and from there, it's just kind of progressively been again, not get knocked down, get back up. You know, you don't get a bunch of auditions and then you book something and continually trying to grow and get over to the stage fright and gain experience and, do you have sort of sympathy when you see people that are on like day one and you kind of, Oh yeah. And I, <laughs> I mean, like, oh, I yeah. get it. What you're doing. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sitting there and I'm nervous, but I've now been able to kind of channel my stage anxiety, but then I look over and I'll see, say somebody who's on a day, like a day player and they're trying to get through their first day or, you know, they're like, this is my first role. And do you have any advice? I'm like, no, good luck. Like I, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you because Go for it. I'm like, I'm still nervous. I still get worried about screwing up. I still get stressed out if I, if I stumble or if I make a mistake, I always, I'm all, I've always been very hard on myself, no matter what it is. So even after doing this for what am I at 15 years overall or whatever it is, I still have that frustration with myself and I still get knocked down. I still feel knocked down, but I kind of just said to them, you know, after, after a while you realize that everybody makes mistakes on set. It is, it is literally a a team effort. And whether it's the focus puller screws up, the director calls something, the AD hasn't heard something, you know, you start to really kind of just realize it's not really all about you. You are important as an actor, but there's, it's just a big production. You know what I mean? So you do see those people and people come up to me and be like, how do I get where you are? Or 
I'm like, there's no magic answer for any of that. It's, it's time, it's luck, it's persistence, it's training. So. Well, especially when these movies are made so fast. Oh yeah. Like 12 in 12 days. And when we shot um, love and where to find it, we shot it in like one of the noisiest places I've ever been. And it was another actor training ground for continuing to stay with the scene as motorcycles are going by people are yelling um, I actually had a family, my best friend's mom who lived in the town showed up and she was driving by and I didn't know. And then my other friend's cousin heard I was in town who I'd met a long time ago and they like stopped and I'm in the middle of filming. They're like, my, my last name's Chitty. And they're like, Hey, Chitty. Hey, Hey, Hey. And I'm like, uh, turn over. I'm like, uh, Hey, how's it going? Like just waved. And it took me a second to figure out who it was. And they're like, cut, cut, cut. And I'm like, sorry guys. Like, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. You know, That's so funny. It's, yeah. there's lots of experiences and it's, when you uh, when you're filming a scene like that, do you just kind of know that you're going to have to be ADRing most of it? I think so. Yeah, um, especially when the director is going, "Hey, look, we're going to have to ADR most of this," <laughs> you know. And and granted, I don't mind ADR, but it, you really do obviously want to get it in the moment because matching that is a very special skill, I think. And you all you can watch a lot of film, and as, if you're an actor, you can see the the, the sound edits you kind of just, there's a bit of a hesitation or a lag. Um, so you do notice, you, I can notice a bit of a difference sometimes in films, but yeah, it's uh, when there's ducks quacking or I think one production, um, the locations manager decided to, it was at a high school, but next to it was a gun range. So you'd be rolling and it'd be like, oh yeah, you know, gunshots. And we're just trying to, you know, kind of just get through it and <laughs> You just, you just know, you just have a laugh with the other actors and team and you're like, well, I guess we're doing it in ADR, you know, yeah. it's like the famous last words, fix it in post, which I'll never say again, because every director looks at me and like, don't say that. Like, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so on IMDb, it said you're a big mountain biker, mountain bike yeah. rider. Is that how you got all of those trips to the emergency room? <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. There's a lot. Um, two of them with the broken arms were actually no one was mountain biking, but it was on the road. So I was not on the mountain, which oddly enough, the mountain is more forgiving than concrete is. Um, but yeah, I grew up uh, working at one of the most famous bike shops uh, in, in Vancouver called deep Cove bike shop. And um, it was basically founded by the pioneers of the mountain biking industry in North Vancouver um, and the lower mainland here, which is kind of, what started mountain biking around the world for free riding. Um, a lot of the guys that go to Red Bull championships um, who have been winners and, and competitors I grew up with. And it's kind of a tight knit community, even moving back. you know, I still see us a lot of the same guys and they're still working in the industry or they're still involved with mountain biking. I fell out of it for a little bit, but I got another bike now. And I don't know, it's just something about being in the mountains. It's just, it's, it's peaceful it's my happy place. I can literally sit on the ground and just kind of stare at the trees and just kind of find Zen. So, and then you ride a gnarly rock face and you feel confident, but. Well, you should come yeah. down here to Utah. Lots of I would love, a lot of my, yeah, a lot of my buddies have ridden Utah. I mean, it's a huge Mecca down there. <laughs> I haven't traveled very much for mountain biking. Um, I really, it, it's always sort of in the back of my mind. I wish I rode more here. Um, and again, like I'm not as crazy as some of the guys up here. I was never the guy to leave too much of the ground. I was fast and I, and I raced a lot of downhill and did really well at it. Didn't really know there was maybe a future in it because at the time I think it was still progressing. I mean, now you can look at guys who are going to go compete in a world cup downhill, uh, Red Bull, free riding, all that kind of stuff. There's a, the ability to sort of make a career out of it. But... Even in the Olympics, I think now. Oh, really? I think so. I could be I mean, wrong. That does not surprise me at all i mean it definitely should be an olympic sport it's it's a very yeah. aggressive awesome yeah. fun sport so yeah. i wish i did it more um but you know as you progress in life there's other things that take over and yeah i don't do as much as i wish but utah yeah. I, would, I would love if i could take some time off and ride a bunch of different places which again it's on my bucket list i definitely utah is, would be up there for sure i would just need somebody to show me around because yeah we have more national parks than any other state that's amazing <laughs> So. really yeah, we do yeah yeah we were all right in LA and i wanted to explore the u.s more so when we move back down i'm definitely going to take some more road trips and try and and, and venture out a little bit more mm -hmm. well so the first time i remember seeing you was on sweetest heart yes and that was a fun movie i enjoyed that it had such a great. 
such a nice cast. I like that it kind of had three relationships they were following. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the people who had been together, uh, the, the young sweethearts kind of figuring their stuff out. And then Chris and, uh, well, now I'm drawing a blank, uh, Julie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Chris McNally, Julie, and then Tammy. And were you with Tammy or with Andrea? I can't remember. You uh, were with I was Tammy. With Tammy, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Tammy. You and Tammy. And then, yeah. And you were the couple that had just gotten married, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which was like, once in my experience, once people that have been single for a long time and then get married, they think they have all of the great advice to tell their single not, friends. Hey, 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 not me. I, I, I dated a lot, like, but I was definitely more the single guy throughout my life and I got married and I literally, even right now, I'm just, I, I have no advice. You know, I, so I seek advice from my, my single friends sometimes, which is not the best advice. <laughs> well, I always feel like saying, I knew you when you were single. I, we were friends. Yeah. I, you're not yeah. like some kind of love expert now. Just I know all of a sudden they, they fall into a relationship and they, and they, they know everything. They've read three love books or what, you know, five <laughs> languages of love. And I mean, I have no, I, I have no advice on it. I don't think I've, the only thing that I've gained in my marriage is, but one uh, that we're both only children and that we're both learning how to give and take because we're just both used to kind of having our way. Um, and we're both alphas. So, you know, there's a lot of standoffs in the sense that, you know, I'm not going to back down from this or she's not going to back down from that. And then after you kind of have a laugh about it and just realize that we're just both being stubborn and yeah, but yeah, those people who <laughs> all but of a sudden you- are single for forever, have no advice. And then they, they've had a relationship <laughs> and they've been married for a year and they're like, well, you know, you need to do this. Yeah. So my experience, <laughs> just like, uh, <laughs> Okay, sure. We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Let's move on. Let's talk about When Calls the Heart. Sure. So that must have been pretty exciting to get to be a part of that show. Yeah. I mean, um, I kind of knew, I think what, well, I think I was on before Chris had joined up, but I knew Chris, I've known Chris for a long time, just through, through mutual friends. But uh, yeah, I auditioned for, uh, I believe it was Martin, uh, one of the directors in the room. And it, at first it just said a small recurring role. And again, just showing up as the town blacksmith, I had not really known uh, too much about the backstory of when calls the heart, but I had previously worked in, um, in, in construction or, or the art department with, with uh, the film industry in Vancouver for about 12 years, we were creating sp- like foam sculptures and all that kind of stuff. So we had originally built the mine shaft in the cave um, for the movie, uh, was, which was before the TV show had a, a even aired. So I was a little bit familiar with the name of it and the location. Um, but yeah, it just booking that role was, it was, it was so cool because I'd already known that the, the cast was so, such a good ensemble together. I, I knew that the crew and the cast, everybody got along. It's, it's, it's one location, you know, it just, it had vibed really well together. And, um, so the first couple of times I showed up, I think I had like one line here and there and kind of always kind of laughed about it because I you know whenever you get on a show you obviously want to grow apart and and kind of become more a part of the show than than not but uh yeah through the through the couple seasons that I was on that my character started to grow more of a storyline and and be a bit more involved in the town and the friendship with uh Aaron Aaron's character Aaron Buckle's character um for his wedding for Jesse's wedding and uh yeah and then just you know, realizing that it's such a, it's such a great little family that they have going on there. The cast just, they blend so well together. Um, Kevin and, um, and uh, the other character, uh-huh. I'm sorry. pardon me? 
Pascal. Pascal. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like they have such a great work camaraderie. They're so funny together. Um, and I know Kevin's wife because I worked at the casting department that she works at and just, you know, it's just nice to walk onto a show that's, that's easy and that everybody gets along and everybody's having fun doing it because you go into yeah. some productions and it's just, people are ripping their hair out and the actors are stressed out. The director's stressed out, the crew's stressed out. And you kind of just go, why are we doing this? You know, it is, it is, it's a beautiful thing that we can create these, these products for people and, and these movies and storylines from the writers and, and everybody has a hand in it. You know, it's, a, it's a, like I said before, it's a, such a big machine um, that when you walk onto a set that everybody's just happy and it works well together, it just makes work and life so much easier. Um, I had, Still I really, I, sorry, I really wish that I had got to stick around. I, I don't know yeah. really what happened there, but <laughs> It Changes still blows my it blows my mind how they were able to edit Lori out of that season. I don't know how they were able to do that. I think yeah, I mean, I, I for me, you know, she was nothing but kind. Everybody had such a such nice, great things to say about her, you know. And and it's not my place to speak on what I had heard through the grapevine of why she had exited, um, aside from the troubles which you know yeah we all know about um but she was very kind to me uh always laughing everybody spoke so highly of her so it was really hard to see that you know it was she was painted as this monster when really you know maybe she, they made bad choices and it wasn't a legal thing to do and whatever but on at for for like for work she was she was great i mean i it was just yeah and then and then seeing the edit and changing and shifting of her kind of just vanishing but as yeah, you I as can believe bear- that they were I just can't believe that they were able to pull it off like how you can like a major character how do you completely eliminate them but they did I, I thought that was unbelievable yeah they just I think Hollywood has no rules and they, you know you, you, you watch <laughs> shows and then all of a sudden the, the character's replaced by somebody completely different playing the same character that actually <laughs> happened to me on uh, Arrow um I wasn't my choice I was I I booked a small recurring role excited you know I shot the one episode it kind of went away and then they called me back and they're like they're bringing your character back I'm like oh great and then they had mentioned that it might be going to somebody else and I said how is that possible they already established my face and they said well he's a vigilante and um they might not show his face and I'm like okay and then I didn't get the role went to somebody else so (laughs) there's no surprising me in this business yeah yeah well, so you have two movies coming out in yeah. January. Very exciting. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we have, don't forget, I love you on Hallmark yes. channel. So yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Um, so I was super excited to work with Christy again, the director, because Christy had hired me for her infidelity, which was uh, one of my, which was my first uh, movie that I had ever filmed and been given a larger role in, um, which was fantastic. And, and she was great to work with. So I was excited to work with her again. And then, um, yeah, the storyline's super cute. Um, I, I mean, I'm assuming I can go into some of the details about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, basically, single dad moves into a new, uh, new neighborhood, uh, meets the neighbor across the street. They start kind of getting a little bit closer. They're both very reserved. And what has happened is that her mom has left her um, a time capsule and she starts discovering these notes left by her mom, which is going to help her get over some of her fears and anxieties that her mom's obviously encouraging her to work through. Um, and my character sort of helps her along with that. And the friendship sort of bonds is I'm a little bit more outgoing, but still reserved and she's a reserve, but has that, you know, curious, curious side to it all. So we end up going on these adventures together and, um, yeah, it's a really sweet, cute little script, and I'm excited to see the final product. Um, yeah, it'll be fun. And, yeah, we filmed and- it filmed it a while ago, so I'm always trying to like relate back and think back of the memories, but sometimes I uh, <laughs> forget. And and that's with Amelia. That, yes, she's one of the best actresses I think in the Hallmark stable of actors. She, she's so professional and so fantastic. I mean, she was a new mom when we were filming, and mm-hmm. I've been raised by a single mom, so my admiration for for women and the capabilities they have is mind blowing. I mean, she was basically, you know, uh, taking care of her newborn and then coming to film and just balancing both out and still just on point and so 
you know, in the moment and, and, and prepared and everything. And I was just like, wow, I am, I'm so happy to be in your presence and learning from you. And just also just the fact that you're a cool, cool woman. Like you could just, you know, and then I met her, met her son and met her husband, which actually since LA is just as small as Vancouver and there's a lot of Vancouver actors who moved down South. Um, you know, one of my good friends that I had met down there is friends with them. And so the camaraderie has always been there too. And uh, yeah, she's, she's very talented and I haven't really been able to watch too much of her work uh, with, I know she's on Chesapeake shores and that's, that's got show's got a big following. So yeah, but she was fantastic to work with. And so is everybody else in the production. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies merch store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable Hardy or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. So then you have on Up TV, you have Love and Where to Find It. Yeah, both, on- these, both of these films' names have changed a few times, so I... I, I- <laughs> trying to make sure that I get the two, the two, the two right. But yeah, love and where to find it. That was the one that we filmed with a very, a very noisy, noisy town. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so hopefully the, 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 the ADR doesn't take over too, too much, but um, yeah, that was a really fun one too. So it was filmed at, at a place called in a place called Kamloops, which is about four hours outside of Vancouver. Um, a little similar to Utah. It's very desert like up there. Um I guess depending on where you are in Utah. Um, but yeah, it was uh, Elise Gatan and um, a few other cast members, which was, you know, fantastic. Again, it was starts out is basically um, small coffee shop owners, not struggling per se, but not generating as much business as they, as they should. Um, and then the big evil guy myself comes in and starts wanting to open up, a, you know, a, a branch chain which would guess would be like the equivalent of starbucks or something like that um but you know i obviously don't tell her that as we start crossing paths and i make a connection with her we start sort of connecting uh, as i'm missing one valid point here the gentleman that i work with um is online dating i'm too shy to get on that oh yeah he he starts making he starts making a connection with um elise's best friend's character but then we both feel that they don't really know how to talk to one another. So then we start talking for them and falling in love with each other through them yeah. unknowingly to us. And then of course the, uh, put the business, you know, aspect into it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've actually seen this one. I thought it was cute. I enjoyed oh, really? it. Yeah. I got a screener and, uh, yeah, I, I liked the kind of, the rivalry of the competing, uh, competing cafes and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and the DOP on it was fantastic. I mean, the lighting and the, the setups that they were able to get and the storyline, it's just, it's a really cute, fun film. And I'm glad that you've seen it. And I'm glad that you like it because I have yet to see it. But when I saw some of the, the clips on ADR, it, uh, it was really well. Yeah. Just really well lit. There's a few good scenes in there that I was, really impressed by it. and, and yeah. just it sets with the moment and the tone and everything like that so um yeah I'm really excited and and I hope people enjoy the film and I'm, I'm very glad you did and I'm glad to hear positive feedback right away before it's even been yeah. out so all right well we like to end our interviews with some fun silly questions so sure. all right what is the best ice cream flavor oh uh, my wife and I just found haagen salted caramel um, ice cream. And that does not last very long in the house between the two of us. Um, and then runner up to that. And I'm not, I'm not firm on and dawes It's just, it's an easy go-to it's a uh, coconut and, um, coconut lemon. I think it is coconut lemon. Mm. Yeah. 
That sounds those good. Are, those are good go-tos. Yeah. All right. What is your favorite color? Oh, uh, I'm, I always say I'm a shades guy. I just, black is usually my favorite color, but, uh, if I'm going to like a color color, probably go with red, Okay, good. but I don't wear a lot of red. <laughs> well, uh, at least it's on brand. It's, you know, Christmas color. I do love Christmas. I went, <laughs> I went crazy this Christmas decorating. Oh. We have our house for the first oh. time. And my wife was like, um, I think you've, you've done enough. And I'm looking around. I'm like, no, I don't think I've done enough. I'm like, we don't even have that much. But yeah, like I'm gonna have run oh, yeah. uh, Clark Griswold's. I, oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I'm not as good as some people with it, but for what we had, and I inherited a lot of my grandma's stuff. I, yeah, I think I did pretty good this year. Yeah, cool. All right, what music are you into? To be honest with you, I love everything, but like the ice cream flavor, if it's like my go-to, I love old jazz. Okay. Billie Holiday is probably one of my favorite uh artists and um i inherited my grandma's record collection and i've sort of been collecting a little bit as i go so she's always playing in the background my grandma was a an entertainer and a musician so oh, neat. she introduced me to a lot of that kind of music and yeah billy holiday for me cooking is just it, yeah, it all they, pairs quite nicely they just had a movie um about billy holiday uh well i guess not just but um it was, yeah, two years last ago, year yeah, United States year. versus Billy Holiday. I have yet to see it. It's definitely on my list. We're, we're yeah. we are kind of limited up here. The States usually gets a lot more. Um, I think content. it's on Hulu, if I'm not mistaken. I don't even know if again the te- I'm not. A tech- <laughs> I don't even know if we have Hulu up here, but I know what Hulu is at least. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, that's cool. Uh, what is your go-to date night food? Steak. That's a good yeah. one. It's yeah. just can't yeah. go wrong a nice ribeye and we, and we learned how to re- reverse sear. So basically I would always have always cooked my steaks on the barbecue. And then when we were living in LA, my wife uh, found a recipe online and basically you bake it at a low temperature and then you pull it out and you, you, you pan sear it. And I've learned that if you put a little sage in there, it gives it a little bit of extra flavor. Um, so a little pat of butter. Yes, exactly. Oh yeah. Yeah. Lots of butter. For me, it's lots of butter. I'm like just bathing it in butter and then I put the butter on the potatoes after. So yeah. yeah. Oh, that sounds good. So when you can get back and doing things again, what is your go-to date night activity to go out and do? For me, um, I love well, we're we're right by the ocean. So I've always been a big boat nut and I love being on the water. It's again, it's mountains or the water for me. Mm-hmm. So um one of my first dates with my wife was actually I packed a picnic or like a like a basically a dinner and I we jumped in the boat and then we went up to this uh private dock um which is probably about a 15 minute boat ride and um I'm not sure if anybody's seen Swan Song which is on Apple but a lot of it was filmed in uh, Indian Arm here and it's just the most beautiful landscapes um you know mountainous terrain and anyways um so we went up there and we pulled out a picnic and yeah that would be my go-to is just a uh, nice bottle of wine, some charcuterie or whatever, and then jump in the boat and go find a little beach or a, a dock or something. Oh, that sounds great. I can oh, see yeah. why you got more dates. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> she said to me, she goes, that was one of the ones that stood out to me. So <laughs> that's good. So there you go. All right. Uh, dogs or cats? Uh, no disrespect to cat lovers. I appreciate you guys, but I am 110% a dog lover. My dog is literally pawing at me for attention right now uh we have a little pocket american bully that we rescued while we were in los angeles and she is basically our child and she has changed our lives completely and uh so it's been very nice having her and i've always had rescues and again i I don't judge but if anybody can rescue an animal no matter what it is it's uh, the best way to go yeah all right beaches or mountains Oh, <laughs> I just, those are two of my favorite things. If I have to pick one, oh, uh, I'm going to have to say the beach. Yeah, I'm team beach, even though um, I live in Utah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, we're spoiled. Like literally, I, you know, the nice thing about Vancouver is you could go skiing and hit the bottom of the hill, ride your mountain bike down the trail, jump in a kayak and go kayaking. Like we do have a lot of accessibility here for that which i'm sure you know on the good day in utah you can do a lot of it too but uh no ocean here though no, we only have the great salt lake which is we call it the devil lake 
Oh, really? How come? Because it's so salty. Oh, really? It's five times saltier than the ocean. Yeah. And the, o- you, and the ocean's bad enough. Like- yeah, it's brutal. You get in and your whole body just like screams at you. <laughs> I did one of those floating um, salt baths that you go in like a, a, a hyper chamber or whatever they're called. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, that was the same thing too. It was like, it was getting my <laughs> eyes and then I was like tasting it. And it was so, because you have to have buoyancy. And yeah. I was like, Why do people do this? And it's like, relax your mind. I'm like, I can't relax. You're talking to me. And now I'm just floating here with salt in my mouth. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Which would you rather have suit and tie or sweats? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I mean, you know, with, with a lot of people working from home, you can combo both now. Cause if yeah, you have a Zoom true. call, you can, be in, you can be in your suit and tie and you're just wearing your sweats on the bottom. Um, but I don't have to wear a suit and tie very often. So I would go, I would go suit and tie just because yeah, I love that. Especially yeah. now. I feel like if I'm in a fancy dress, that means I'm like doing something and not in the house. Even, even having to do <laughs> my hair or trim my face for this. I was like, yes, I get to, I got something to do. I get to trim my neckline and clean myself up a bit. Yeah. Even, <laughs> even self tapes. I mean, yeah. when, it, when COVID first hit, we were in quarantine for so long. Um, I think, it, you know, the first self tape came out and I did my hair and my wife goes, Oh, there you are. Like we just, <laughs> you just forget. Cause yeah. you don't, we're not going out anywhere. And we're I know we had all these out. like mountain men. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's my nickname. My wife actually, and her, my, one of her friends calls me mountain man. Cause <laughs> I taught her how to crab and fish and do all that stuff. So I'd like to fall into that category. Hopefully if I come to Utah. Yeah, there we go. The all right. Man. We already thinks answered this, but your favorite holiday Christmas. Christmas. Yes. <laughs> yes. And now that there's so many more Christmas movies, like I don't even, I think Hallmark had 47 this year and Lifetime and then Netflix is like, there's it's endless content now, which yeah. I love and dislike all at the same time, but it's just, it's, yeah, it's a great holiday and I get to decorate and just be happy and, you know, drink a little red wine every evening because I got nowhere to go and have fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. What is your favorite Hallmark or romantic movie? Oh, wow. Um, I mean, the Hallmark content for me is always just fun and it's a good watch. Um, Romantic. I like something you got to dig your teeth into. I don't even know if Blue Valentine is considered a romantic movie, but it's, it's gritty and sad romantic. Yeah. I like sad romantic. (laughs) I got lots lots of feelings. It's about the end of their relationship, right? I, know. I haven't seen it. <laughs> it's a, it's just, it's just, a, I don't know. I like, it, yeah, it's a gritty. It's, it's fine. Gritty. You can answer it however, however you define it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there we go. Yeah. Some people like it was really uh, sad, sad romance. <laughs> well, I just watched, I just watched, I watched Coda. Oh, uh, so good. Yeah. I was bawling my eyes out. And, and again, like, I like, I like those movies too. I like the feel good movies. I mean, as an actor. You could have a balance. You know, yeah, it's cheesy to say, but you know, I like watching, I do like watching everything. Um, mm-hmm. But I like watching movies that I don't have to, I don't feel pushed. Like Coda didn't push me to feel an emotion. It's just, you just, you kind of relate to it in, in some ways. And then you're kind of, uh, you, you, you don't understand it in, in others. And yeah, yeah, it was, it's just, that's it. There you go. That's, that's my latest favorite that's film. That's a good pick. Coda. I love Coda too. So with you there. Yeah. Well, very good. You answered all the questions. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on Talk With Us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. That was awesome. And I really appreciate it. And I look forward to speaking with you again sometime. Yeah, definitely. And do you have social media you want to share? Uh, Yeah, I just changed my Instagram to I am Clayton James because before it had a lot of underscores. Apparently, there's a few other Clayton James out there. Um, And that, that I believe, is it. I'm not very good with technology. So Twitter is, I, I don't even know how to use Twitter. Well, you're probably better off. <laughs> Twitter's kind of a mess. Is it? But, no. <laughs> but you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. And also make sure you follow the Hallmarkies podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews, five stars. We really appreciate it so much. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We also have our patron group and merch store. Check that out. And thanks so much, Clayton. This was really fun to get to know you. And uh, yeah, we will definitely be in touch. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It was great to get to know you as well. All right. Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you so much.